Hi, I'm Dustin Abbott, and I'm here to uh, give you my review of the new Canon 24 to 105 millimeter f4 LIS Mark II. Now, this lens, unlike most of the lenses that I review, is actually not a brand new lens. It was released uh, towards the end of last year, and um, I had full intentions of reviewing it towards the end of last year. However, it got delayed, and so. Um, after the delays kind of shook out, my release window had passed, and so ended up not getting slotted in. But uh, when I uh, brought in the Canon 6D Mark II, I requested that it be sent with the 24-105L Mark II, and so that I could uh, familiarize myself with that lens. Now, for a Canon L series lens, which is you know typically a, a kind of a big deal when a new lens is released. It seems like the 105, 24-105L Mark II has kind of flown under the radar. And so I was a little interested like about maybe why that was. And after having spent time with the lens, I honestly think the reason why a lot of reviewers have not touched it is that it, it is surprisingly underwhelming in a lot of ways. Uh, it's not to say, of course, that there aren't some improvements over the original 24-105L to Mark II, and I certainly noticed an improvement when it comes to some things like distortion, for example, at the wide end. Um, there is a bit less vignette on the wide end, and then there are some other improvements in that the IS is, you know, it's brought up to Canon's current standard, and so it both does a better job of providing stability. It's also a bit quieter in operation. The same can be uh, said for the autofocus, which um, is a little bit improved, and I think um, more so improved, not with um, general stills, it's, it's, it's plenty fast, no problem there, but I certainly can tell a difference when it comes to a video, particularly when doing AF servo, say with DPAF on most of Canon's newer bodies, that uh, there's certainly less sound involved with it and also none of that kind of pulsing that can be associated with USM and, uh, and also kind of that, that sound, pulsing sound that can be associated with uh, USM motors um, when doing AF servo video. And so it certainly has been optimized for Canon's current standards. But I think that my point is perhaps best illustrated if we jump in and we take a look at the actual image quality from the lens. Okay, we're gonna start our comparison with a, just a look at overall resolution here. And I'm gonna use what I would consider probably the most logical alternative in my mind uh, to this lens. Now, Sigma does also make a 24 to 105 F4 lens that some might also cross shop. But price-wise, there's only a $100 difference between Canon's 24 to 105 F4L Mark II and uh, then Tamron's new 24 to 70 F2.8 G2 lens. And, uh, and so I, I, if it were in my mind, these were the two lenses that I would be choosing between um, at this price point. So we're gonna do use it, and I, just, I happen to have it here at the moment, so we'll uh, do it, use this as a comparison point. So first, starting at 24 millimeters, we're going to start by looking at both of them wide open. And so the Tamron, of course, is a, you know, a full stop brighter at f2.8. Um, but let's just see how things compare here. So we'll start by looking at the center of the frame here at 24 millimeters. And I would say looking here at 24 millimeters um, that both lenses are fairly close. The Tamron seems to have maybe a hair more pop towards the center of the frame. And as we start to move out this direction, um, that continues to be true. We're heading towards the top left corner area here. And so looking up here, uh, they look to me about roughly similar, I would say. Now let's look up in this area here because here this uh, roof is going to show some chromatic aberration. We can see that wide open, there's a little bit more chromatic aberration showing on the Canon lens. Um, kind of a green fringing that's taking place there. This is a really high contrast area. We'll look also up in this corner where you can see more of that. And here, you know, there's a little bit of CA showing on the Tamron, but, you know, definitely more noticeable showing on the Canon lens. Here on the far right, you know, we can see just a little bit um, better detail on the Tamron wide open. And I would say that we're a little bit more impacted by vignette here with the Canon than we are with the uh, Tamron lens here towards the edge. 
Now, both of them in this super high contrast area are showing uh, some fringing here. Um, but what we're seeing is that there's a little bit of purple, well, now there's some purple fringing on the Tamron, but you'll see that on the Canon lens, there's also that green fringing um, that is completely absent on the Tamron lens. Look too at this uh, hinge here, and you can definitely see better detail on the Tamron, and that's with the Tamron at f2.8. So not necessarily amazing performance at 24 millimeters. Now, if we stop the Tamron down to uh, f4, and so we have identical settings here now, let's take a look at what we find here. And uh, in the center of the frame, you know, definitely, you know, just stronger contrast and detail rendering for the uh, Tamron lens. It's definitely the, the sharper at 24 millimeters, no question about it. Uh, looking up towards the edge here, now we see some better contrast on the Tamron, you know, a little bit more detail rendering there. Now, one area will, I will um, say is that to me, this gets slightly, slightly, slightly busier on the Tamron than it does on the Canon lens. So uh, I'll give a, a little edge to the Canon there. Now, obviously now uh, chromatic aberrations, what little there were are reduced even more. And vignette, of course, now is significantly improved on the Tamron um, F4 has cleared up most of it. And so it's definitely brighter in this area than what the uh, the Canon lens is. And uh, then also, if we look towards this area here, the purple fringing has diminished somewhat, of course, on the Tamron. And of course, it hasn't changed on the Canon because it still has not stopped down. Look at this area through here as well. And you can just see a notable difference both in the contrast here and then how the fringing is negatively impacting the uh, Canon's image there. And so, you know, once again, look at this. Uh, that's a pretty huge difference between the, the quality of the resolution and contrast uh, between the two lenses there. Now, since this is a lens that, you know, very likely, there are a focal length, I should say, that would be very likely to be used for um, shooting in landscape type situations, we'll just take a quick look with the stop down a bit further. Um, F5.6 and at F5.6, I would say the Canon has shown a nice uptick in uh, sharpness there. That's encouraging. So at more traditional apertures. Now, out towards the edge, there's, there's still a, a pretty clear advantage for the Tamron lens, and unfortunately still a little bit more of that lateral CA here uh, towards the uh, edges of the frame that are still showing up, and you see that here. And so an improvement in the center, but um, that sharpness is still not going out to the very edge. Let's try F8. At F8, we see that the lenses are looking fairly similar here in the center. I don't necessarily see an edge for either one. Let's look back up in these areas we've been looking at. Towards the edge of the frame, you know, just a, a slight advantage for the Tamron, but not significant here. And, um, and now uh, stop down to F8, I'm seeing just a little bit more of that lateral CA showing up um, on the uh, Tamron lens. It wasn't really there at uh, larger apertures. However, here we're going to see that the Tamron has basically cleared up on that fringing while it's still very much persistent on the, uh, the Canon lens. And similarly in this area, there's just a big difference, continues to be a big difference there towards the edge of the frame. So, I mean, the bad news is, is that even stop down to F8, the Canon lens really doesn't ever show kind of a perfect performance. And if we look down towards this uh, corner here, you know, you see that CA, um, it's just, it's not fabulous, um, even stop down. Now I skipped on ahead to uh, 50 millimeters here at uh, 35 millimeters. The Tamron continues to have the advantage. So let's look at 50 millimeters. And uh, here again, the Tamron now is both of them wide open. So F 2.8 versus F 4. And here at the center of the frame, uh, things are roughly similar and uh, not really a big advantage for, or really an advantage for either lens. Looking at the extreme edge of the frame, uh, you know, Neither of them look, you know, incredible at the very edge. However, I think that maybe the Canon is a, just a slight, slight bit better in terms of the contrast here and rendering towards the edge of the frame. We'll look up in this corner as well. And uh, there, you know, it's, it's very close, but I do think the Canon has slightly better. Picture definitely changes if we stop the lens down to F4, the Tamron down to F4. And now if we uh, look towards the center of the frame, you know, there's a, there's a notable advantage in contrast and resolution for the Tamron. 
and uh, looking up um, even towards the edges of the frame. You can just definitely see better contrast. The details are more finely rendered on the Tamron than they are on the uh, Canon lens. If we stop them down, both down to f5.6, the image quality here in the center, it looks more similar than different to me. Moving towards the edge, I would say the same is true. However, there's just a slight bit better uh, contrast on the details, and so they're resolving a little bit better on the Tamron. Look, for example, at this nail head compared to that, which has a slightly muddy appearance on the Canon lens. And so uh, towards the edge of the frame, it looks to me like the Tamron is showing a little bit more, um, just a little bit better rendering towards the edge of the frame. And, uh, you know, and the further we go down here towards this corner, the more kind of true that that becomes, that the uh, Tamron is delivering a stronger edge performance, but it's not significant. All right, how about at 70 millimeters? We've reached the edge of the Tamron's uh, focal length. Ta the Canon obviously still has a th not a 35 millimeters to go. So f2.8 versus f4 once again. But before we jump in, just, you know, pause and take a look at the color rendition globally. And, um, you know, there's, there's not a whole lot dividing these lenses, frankly, on a global level. Uh, we'll jump in and we'll look at the detail here towards the center of the frame, you know, wide open f2.8. Looks like there is a, the slightest edge for the uh, Tamron lens. Let's look at in this area here where there's some detail and you can definitely see it here that it's just a little bit kind of hazy look there on the Canon, whereas the uh, Tamron showing better contrast. If we go up towards this top corner, the difference is clear. The, the Tamron is much stronger um, at f2.8 in the extreme corner than what the Canon is. Now, the bad news for the Canon is that the Tamron, you know, had a kind of a stop disadvantage there that it was at f2.8. So if we now jump in and look at those spots again with the Tamron stop down to the equivalent aperture of f4, it's not even a competition. The Tamron is, is vastly better, both in contrast, in resolution, um, it's all of those things. It's just, it's a huge difference. So if we stop them down both to f5.6, the uh, Canon does start to redeem itself and it looks better in the center and up towards the corner, however, while that has improved the center, it, as we've seen, it doesn't really affect the extreme corners that never get uh, particularly sharp and still have kind of that, a bit of that haze, um, just a, a lack of uh, contrast and detail uh, compared to the Tamron lens. And so, you know, that's unfortunate that, you know, you really have to, if you want to get extreme corner sharpness, you have to really, really stop the lens down. Now, obviously I can't compare the Tamron for you here at uh, 105 millimeters since it doesn't go that far, but we'll just take a quick look at the uh, Canon's performance. Uh, fairly similar to what we saw at 70 millimeters. I don't think that it's lost a lot over that last 35 millimeters. Uh, that looks roughly the same to me in terms of the detail uh, rendered there. If anything, I would say that this corner looks a little bit better at 105 millimeters than what it did at, uh, at 70 millimeters. However, this side here is looking a little bit softer by comparison. There may be a slight, slight centering issue there. Um, and so let's, uh, we'll take it down to f5.6. And so just to give you an idea, I'll toggle back and forth. You can see that uh, there's definitely uh, some vignette that clears if you stop it down to f5.6. And uh, here, you know, there still is a little bit of, of haze that's showing. Um, you know, there's a, a mild, mild improvement at f5.6, but I would say your bigger advantage is going to be in vignette and, and hopefully in this corner, uh, which still doesn't look great to me. So how about here at f8? Just toggle back for a moment. So you can see there is a mild bit of vignette improvement even from f5.6 to f8. Um, and this corner is looking better, uh, not exceptional or anything, but better. So um, to get kind of corner sharpness at 105 millimeters, f8 seems to be the optimal aperture for that. Okay, just for the fun of it, we'll also do a comparison at APS-C of APS-C. So this is on a Canon 80D here. And, and so this is a 24 millimeters F2.8 Tamron F4 for the Canon. 
And so let's jump in here and take a look. I definitely uh, think that at in the center of the frame that the Canon looks more contrasty and has a little bit better sharpness. So it actually in the center of the frame does pretty well in that transition to APS-C. Remember, however, this is an F 2.8 F4. But as we've seen previously, the sharpness really doesn't make it into the corner, whereas the Tamron actually looks really fabulous here in the corner at 24 millimeters f2.8. And unfortunately, of course, if we stop the Tamron down to f4, that divide becomes even greater. And now the, you know, the Canon's looking pretty shabby by comparison in the corners of the frame. In the center of the frame, the Tamron has caught up, but um, you know, I don't know that it's surpassed it. It looks pretty much the same to my eye. Uh, we'll just take a quick look up in the right corner here. And um, you know, the same is true here. Tamron looks pretty great. Canon doesn't. So what happens if we stop them both down to f5.6? Well, looking at the center of the frame, uh, image quality is fairly similar. Um, you know, perhaps the slightest bit of a contrast sharpness edge for the Canon here, or excuse me, for the Tamron, um, which looks a little bit better in the detail there. Uh, up in this corner here, however, the, the Canon looks a little bit better, but um, the, the Tamron is blowing it away. I mean, just so much finer detail rendering there. So uh, once again, you know, we're going to see kind of the same patterns on APS-C that the, um, the Tamron is definitely the stronger lens on either full frame or APS-C. Now we did point out chromatic aberration and I was actually kind of surprised to see this kind of thing. Uh, I just frankly I expected a bit better out of a, a lens that cost over a thousand dollars from Canon, you know, that's delivered in 2017. Definitely some purple fringing there. Um, and, uh, you know, that just, that doesn't look pretty to me. And, and it's just, to me, it's rare to see something like this in the center of the frame. I shoot this kind of shot. Those of you that follow my work know that I shoot this kind of shot all the time. And so, you know, off here in the corners, you know, I wouldn't necessarily be as surprised to see it, but it's definitely there. And the fact that it's there even in the center of the frame is, you know, it is, it's disappointing to me. Now the quality of the defocused area here is, is you know, it's, it's quite nice. I think it's, it's soft. Uh, I'm not seeing a lot of hard edges or busyness in this kind of medium, you know, area of transition. So I consider that a positive there. Here's another shot that while the uh, sharpness doesn't necessarily blow me away, we've got a fairly nicely round uh, bokeh circles there, even towards the edges of the frame here. And so uh, that's, you know, that's a nice result. Now this is at f5.6, um, you know, it shows that the lens is certainly capable of delivering some nice color rendition. At f5.6 in these areas of transition, um, it's, you know, that's not too bad towards the center. It's when we get off towards the edges of the frame here, we're in these high contrast areas, we're getting both the green and the purple fringing. The downside of that is that, you know, kind of that double whammy um, makes it a little bit harder to correct non-destructively. Now I wanted to sh share this image to show, this is, you know, just a construction type shot, but this is 24 millimeters and this shows where the, the vignette can certainly be negative. There's, um, you know, a fairly strong vignette here at 24 millimeters. You know, unfortunately Canon does give you a lot of options with a native lens for correcting that, but, you know, certainly, you know, just looking at lens performance, uh, I'm not thrilled by how heavy the vignette continues to be. That was a weak point on the original 24 to 105 lens, and unfortunately not one that they have improved all that much. Now this shot is at 105 millimeters, and uh, I, I definitely liking the way that this has bled away to transition. So I'm going to end on a positive note for the image examination and that I think that, you know, for being F4, that's a pretty beautiful blurring away. And so 105 millimeters is long enough to allow you to really blur backgrounds if you're reasonably close to your subject. And I also thought that, you know, that's a lot of detail rendered in the, you know, kind of the, the center of the frame and that the fine detail of the rope. You know, if we go towards the edge, we lose some of that. But, you know, like in this kind of image where you're using the lens to its strength, I think that that is a, a pretty beautiful result. So as you can see in a number of ways, the new 24-105L Mark II is uh, somewhat disappointing in that the improvements over the previous generation lens are minimal at best. There is some slight improvement in terms of the, the sharpness in the corners um, at some focal lengths, but kind of at the critical landscape focal lengths, 
wide open performance is really not all that fantastic. And um, if you were to compare it, say, with a similarly priced lens, uh, Canon's 16 to 35 millimeter f4L um, IS lens, that lens is superlative by comparison and has really great sharpness, wide open from corner to corner. The Canon 24 to 105, it just, Mark II, it just, just isn't there. And as we saw from the comparison to the Tamron lens that, you know, here is a, a third party lens that it cost $100 more, but it's also an f2.8 lens. And, uh, and so we, we see that really the only advantage that the Canon version has is that it does have that additional 35 millimeters of focal length but it has a disadvantage in the maximum aperture and also um, in you know some comparison testing the image stabilizer on the new Tamron is actually a hair more effective autofocus is no slower it's no louder um, it's it's just as good and that's the conundrum I think that Canon faces in 2017 that it didn't, uh, you know, 10 plus years ago when the first 24 to 105 was released. And that is that the, the competition has gotten a lot better during that time. And um, one is left to question really what Canon's intention was in modernizing this lens. I mean, I do think that it is, as I've noted, it is optimized a little bit more for um, DPAF autofocus and for AF video servo focus. Um, and the image stabilizer is a little bit better, but in terms of kind of moving the bar uh, for a 24 to 105 L lens, it really hasn't done that very much. I'm Dustin Abbott, and if you'll take a look down in my uh, the description down below, you can find linkage to my written review, to my image gallery, and of course, also there are some buying links there and uh, ways you can follow me on social media, become one of my patrons at my Patreon account. And of course, if you haven't already, please click that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.